Hello again. In the last video, there were a couple of things that I said I was going to have to look at, and we've got all that sit, set now, so let me continue on and show you what's going on. First of all, I was trying to show you how if we added an animal with no name, we should see an exception raised because we had added that code to our setter in our name property. Well, it wasn't happening. Let's show that again. I'm getting an error on my gender because I had added that code in and I'm not getting any sort of problem with my name. So let's take a look at that and see why. When we create our animal using our constructor that accepts all of the parameters from our calling object, we're setting the name using the lowercase class level variable instead of using our property. In our property, setter is what what activates that edit control. So I'm going to change this to use the property, the class property, instead of the class field. Let's run that and see if that has an impact. I'm going to try and add a blank animal. I get my error and then when I go to instantiate my animal, yay, I get my exception that the parameter cannot be null. So if I am working with a class, I've mentioned for quite some time that that's one of the reasons that classes are so important because we can create our business logic rules inside of our class and enforce those rules no matter what kind of module is calling us as a class. So in this case, you see that we're raising an exception if somebody passes us an invalid value and tries to update the name. Now that's just a side note. It's an important class concept so that you can see the difference between setting the lowercase field and the uppercase property. So depending on how we're coding that, that lowercase or uppercase character can make a huge difference, can't it? Okay, the other thing that we were working on was trying to use our error event in our form to give us the error about our gender. And right here I had created some code to check the gender and if we did not have a valid gender I was going to um, give, a, give our user an error. We don't like using message boxes because they're so disruptive to the user so an error handler is a preferred method. So I'm going to find my error provider that I already created on the form and I'm going to implement the set error method of that error provider. Now the things that I need to pass to that, oops, try to get ahead there with typing and then I lose my IntelliSense, I wanted you to see that. But for the set error, the parameters that I'm gonna pass, first of all, is the name of a control. And that's a control like on my form, for one example. And this error is associated with our group box and our group box contains all of those gender radio buttons. So I'm going to raise this error on our gender group box. And then the next thing I need to pass is a string value. And that is going to be the content of our error. So I'm going to say, please select a gender. And that will be the error message that shows up. Now let me show you how that works. I've got some error checking again going on on my gender field, and I'm going to execute this. Now, earlier, we saw that if we, name, if we leave our name blank, we're going to raise an exception, which will cancel our program. We need to handle that in our code, but for right now, I'm going to go ahead and put in a name. I'm going to leave the other information blank and choose to add this animal. Now you see what our error provider is doing, is giving us this flashing red exclamation point on our group box. And if we mouse over that, we'll see our message. Please select a gender. Okay, so that's some fancy editing. We'd had some conversations in class about what the preferred way was in Windows to handle an error. And everything that I'm researching is saying that this error provider is the most um, preferred method because it's least disruptive to our user. Now I want to show you how to add a, add a um, dog with our form. 
before I leave you all on your own. So let me close out of this. And in my form, I'm going to add another button that is going to go... I'm going to make my form kind of wander. I guess I'll add a button over here that's going to allow me to add a dog. I'm going to name this BTN Dog. How about BTN Add Dog? That would be better. And my text property is going to say Add Dog. Now I'm going to go ahead and update my back color because I was working on my forms appearance I'll make this one just a bit darker and I'm gonna set my font Just pick anything there. All right, so now I've got to add a dog. Um, I want to go ahead and if somebody chooses to add a dog, I'm going to display a new label that asks for the breed. Now this label is going to be something that I'm going to refer to in my code because I'm going to disable it. So I'm not going to leave it the default name like we do often. I'm going to rename this LBL Breed. And I'm going to fix my font because I've had it made everything a little bit bigger here. And I want to add a text box. TXT breed. Again, I want it to be a little bigger. Update my font. All right, so now I have a label and a breed prompt to go with my dog and I think I'm going to go ahead and how would be the best way to handle it lots of things we could do right I think what I'll do is um, change the text property on my button to save whenever they say they want to add a dog so I can just use that same button control again and try to handle it that way so I'm going to double click on that button and first of all if they click on this add dog I'm going to say if my button this text property is add dog then I'm going to enable our label and make it visible and I'm going to do the same thing with our text box And I think I'll go ahead and set the focus in that text box. Now, I'm going to go ahead and change the button's text property. And make it say save. So that I'm ready 
to redo this. Now, if I hit this else clause, I know that this is the second time that they've hit, hit the button. And now it says save. And I'm going to try to save my animal. Now I'd like to be able to check my gender. So I think I'll, for now, just copy and paste all this code out of my animal click. And if they click save, I'm going to create a dog. dog, my dog, and he's going to be a new dog, and again, I'm going to use all of these text fields and everything, but I'm going to add now our breed, because the dog also needs that, and then I'm going to output our dog, dog's information. So easy enough. Now I've got it set. The only other thing I need to do is I'm going to go to my form and I'm going to select those new fields, my breed labels and text bar box, and I'm going to set their enabled property to false to start and their visible property to false to start. And now I'll run and see what I've got. I'm going to type in a name. Fido is a female. And she is green. And I want this to be a dog. So I'm going to add my breed. It's going to be poodle. And then I can say. And so now in my class box, I see I've got uh, Fido, who's a female, who's green, who's a poodle. And it looks like everything is working perfectly. This is the kind of implementation that I would like for your employee at this point. You don't need to be doing anything more. We need some sort of two-string method to indicate that our output is valid. Um, you don't have to do everything this way. You can use message boxes. I just wanted to show you some alternatives and give you some different ways of handling errors and explain to you how we can implement our class business logic in our setters. So have a great day. Thank you. And um, let me know if you have any questions.